Welcome back to an exclusive episode of Red Tinted Glasses. We're diverting from football today and I'm delighted to be joined by my good friend and local darts player, I'm going to say it, he might not want to admit it, but Sean McDonald, thanks for joining us on the show today. Well, what is Glenn? How are you? Good, thank you. Um, you should have some exciting news for everyone. You're down in Milton Keynes at Q School trying to earn yourself a tour card on the PDC and you've made it to the final stage. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Um, came down here on uh, Sunday. Play started Monday. So we've got all those uh, wonderful things to do around testing and enter a, entering a sporting bubble, um, which has its own difficulties and challenges and, you know, thoughts around should we be doing this, all that, and the next thing? But i uh, probably like to open by saying PDC have done a fantastic job in, in making everyone feel safe. Um, the size of the arena we're using for the number of players there is is huge. Um, so, yeah, just get that get that in early. But, yeah, I arrived on Sunday, passed my test, sat in my car for 45 minutes, wasn't allowed in the hotel, in through one door, do your test, get out just in case. Um, I think there was a couple of positives on on Sunday, um, none last night for the second phase that's going on just now. So um, that's good news. Uh, yeah, so got my got my result checked in, and uh, yeah, just settled just into hotel com- life. <laughs> yeah, competed competed over the last three days, and yeah, Here we've um, we've managed to get through to the final stage. Yeah, we'll we'll come to that and speak through your your experiences. But like I said, I really appreciate you taking the time to kind of give us first dibs of speaking to you and your success so far, and hopefully that continues in the final phase. Um, what was the motivation for you to to go to Q School, especially now? Obviously, there's the pandemic. You've you used to kind of play darts more regularly ten or so years ago. So why why now for going back? Yeah. Um, you could probably answer that better than me. I've got no idea. Um, <laughs> play, Rachel driving play, you that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, definitely not. No, let me look at the camera. No, <laughs> no. Um, no, I, I last played in the PDC 13 years ago. Um, I, I did some uh, I did some players championship in, in UK Open events back then. The days before you needed a full-blown tour card, it was a bit more open. It was a bit easier to get access to. Um, played in a couple of UK Open events um, as well. But then um, I kind of I had a, a downward spell where I wasn't doing very well. Um, I, I was really grateful for the sponsor I had at the time, um, Masada Bar. They were the only sponsor I had. wasn't quite enough enough to cover. And the challenges of just trying to tour Europe um, – at the stage of life I was at it became too much. So I came off um, and I probably played competitively for about hour, three years locally after that. Um, and then kind of career took over. So I haven't played competitively at all um, for the last 10 years. I had a little six month spell playing local pub darts um, for the Brig in, in between that 10 years. But other than that, really, I really hadn't played at all. So um, lockdown came. Uh, I've obviously got a board up in the house. There's a board under there for, for my two boys, Murray and Max, who are five and two. And to be honest, it's probably Murray's interest. Um, Max plays as well, obviously, but, but being two, he, he doesn't quite understand the full concept. He can throw, but he doesn't quite understand the full concept. Murray's been playing me at games like cricket. Mm. He understands high score. We've been using it to help him with his mass and his uh, adding and subtracting um, mm. during homeschooling. So... I kind of just started finding myself. We, we got into a little routine when, when Rachel puts Max to bed. Murray and I had been downstairs playing um, each night. And I was kind of surprised just how quickly like sharpness came back. Um, so I started playing, playing a bit, bit more regularly um, throughout the summer and through lockdown. And, and from there, I've just kind of gradually grown back into it, to be fair. 
Yeah, it's interesting how, you know, something like that can come back to, I suppose, if they say it's like riding a bike, once you know it, it never it never leaves you. Um, funny, I was speaking to Rachel during your matches on, what day are we on Thursday, so Tuesday, and she said that, you know, she was struggling to focus on Murray's maths by also focusing on your game as well. So I don't know if they were using your games as maths practice for the homeschooling. Yeah, um, and... You know, speaking to you guys as well um, throughout it, watching those scoreboards when you've actually got interest in somebody who's playing must be a nightmare because all you're watching is a score update. You know, great that they've, they've got the technology that everything is is electronic these days. You know, you, you'd have been, you know, just a few years ago, you'd have just been waiting for a Twitter updates on, on the actual result. Yeah. Um, and now you've got access to every single score. And actually, I, I was sitting yesterday waiting to go on next um so i put dark connect up on my phone to see how slow it was so i'm watching the board that i'm waiting for the winner on and watching it on my phone the delay is about five seconds if that it's so quick mm -hmm. um so you know you are kept up to date but i can imagine there was a few a few nervous moments um i think in all sports everyone always says it's worse to watch than actually play isn't yeah, it so yeah um when especially you, yeah, when we when you, can't we can't see the board uh, as you said, Dark Connect is just the scoreboard. So we've no idea yeah. where you're aiming or your opponent's aiming. And yeah. we don't know if the first starts, what it's hit. It, we're just waiting for the score. And I think that makes it a lot a lot worse. Yeah. Also sounds like it's good that I can't hear the abuse when I only score 58 <laughs> or 59. And the disappointment's eating through, you know? Yeah, well, as um, Michael Murray and Stuart Beaton will attest for in our group chat, the virtual booing that we did when yesterday you were on for a nine darter and the, the the next three darts didn't go to plan and um, we said oh, it's probably a good thing you couldn't hear it well it was seven in it was treble 19 that was missed which is ironic because i probably hit treble 19 most successfully out of out of the three days but um yeah yeah probably i could probably feel it in some way you know the disappointment yeah. but it's, it's never it actually Sorry, okay. it's never actually been one at Q School. Has um, it never, no, that I, I was reading an article before I came down here. Um, there's been plenty of attempts, last dart attempts, but mm. yet, yet to be a nine dart at Q School, yeah. Yeah, well, you're certainly um, picking up your form as the as the, the days went past. But you speak about the support that you receive, sponsors. Uh, obviously, you've got your sponsors that have. Um, helped you to get to Q School as well and family support and friends as well just how much has that support from both um, meant to you over the last few days yeah huge um, kind of first of all I'm going to do a shameless plug um, so th thanks to Gary um, Keith uh, car well known carpet fitter in Aberdeen um, and thanks to Derek Weston who runs the Granite City Open which is our mm -hmm. biggest darting event up up north Um and Willie G tattoo who needs no introduction. If you're, if you're going to get a tattoo, anyone go and see him because he's he's unbelievable. Um, but he's based in Northern Ireland, so it's a bit difficult from Aberdeen. Um, and then obviously my, my employers here at Tech have been unbelievably flexible with allowing me to do this. But but yeah, back back to the the friends and family support. Um, I mean, some of those people have mentioned their friends as well. Um, you know, it, it, it does help. The, the messages, what I put on Twitter about thanking everyone for the support was more about um, Monday going into Tuesday. So, mm -hmm. you know, I came down first competitive match in 10 years. Obviously, drew Adam Monk, who's who's through and, and, and one of the favourites to, to win a tour card. Um, wasn't about drawing the name or, or the fact that it was my first match. It was just all kind of about my own performance. I... I averaged 85, which, you know, you play county level isn't isn't a bad average at all, but at this level, you, you're not going to do much on an 85 average. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I started slowly and, and played my way back into the match and then and then didn't kick on. So I was disappointed. And the, and the messages of support that I got from people that had won tour cards before, um, from friends and family just saying, you know, keep your, keep your head up. Other people pointing out, winning averages um, from other matches saying look you know you got a tough draw and, and this that and the next thing you know when when you're feeling a bit disappointed on how you've performed that really does help mm -hmm. um, and you know then turn to turn that into 
a motivation to kick on the next day and then actually kicking on the next day kind of you just you appreciate it more you know yeah and I think it, it was a tough draw and the when I when I looked to see who you draw I thought oh that's probably the hardest of the most recognizable names that are at Q School outside your Fallon Sherricks and Kevin Painters he was the one mm-hmm. that I knew of obviously he beat Michael Van Gerwen to win the world youth championship and yeah I didn't message you after the game straight away because, you know, sometimes when when you lose a game and if you're frustrated, the last thing you want is folk pestering you and you just want that little space to yeah. yourself. So I waited for you to come to us and, and, you know, offload your feelings. And then we, you know, piled in with our messages of support and let's go again tomorrow because, you know, if, if it is a disappointing defeat, the last thing you want is, oh, well, there's always tomorrow when you thought, well, actually could have done something today yeah you need to get over that feeling first yeah if Rachel had recorded our FaceTime call after that match that that would have been worthy viewing you'd have got a few (laughs) hits on that one um but yeah you go through the roller coaster of of emotions you got to be you got to be prepared for it and even though I came with like zero expectation I mean Mm -hmm. who puts something down for for 10 years and then just expects to win of course Mm -hmm. I didn't um I was just going to come and prepare properly and, and try and do the best I could so while I, I wasn't annoyed that I lost I was just I was frustrated that I played my way back in um, to get to 3-3 and then didn't kick on from there and that mm-hmm. that was kind of what was what was bugging me at that point yeah and um, before we speak about the matches themselves and obviously for those watching on YouTube we'll see the the dartboard behind Sean um, up in his room what's it been like um being in a biosecure bubble, these sporting bubbles that many of us hear about um, as sports fans, but none of us really have ever, well, hopefully not experienced. So can you give us a bit of an insight into that? Yeah, for, first of all, I wouldn't have came if there wasn't mandatory testing, first of all. So you, you've got the comfort that everyone's had um, a COVID test and tested negatively before they can enter into the bubble. Um, it, it's restrictive. It's not, you know, if if you what I would say is if you don't do well on on your own and in your own company, mm-hmm. I, I would I would advise against it. Um, so, for example, in in the main arena itself, after you play, if you lose, you have to mark the next match, obviously, and then once you're finished marking that match, you have ten minutes to leave. And you have to go back to your room. Um, you're only allowed to leave the premises for up to an hour a day, which includes your daily exercise, any essential shopping, even the essential shopping, they've asked that you don't go to busy shops um, and anything you can get delivered in, please please do that instead. So, um, you know, those kind of rules does make it feel a little safer, um, but it, it is restricting, it is difficult. Um, and yeah, like I said, if, if you're a person that doesn't do well on their own, I wouldn't advise advise for it um, from the safety aspect yes you, you've still got the risks that someone could have um, passed a test but do have COVID and it's just not appeared yet mm-hmm. um, you know you're taking that risk um, but you just have to be sensible like I've not I've not joined up with anyone for a practice partner I've done all my practice on my own mm-hmm. um, I've only gone into the venue to register and then I've come straight back out and then I only go down half an hour before play um, even when I'm there, I keep my distance. I, I practice on my own. I watch my own board, um, and I don't, I don't really mingle. So I've probably got a reputation for being unsociable, but <laughs> hey ho, safety yeah. first and all yeah. that. Um, so yeah, and then obviously they're they're retesting each time. So I was in phase one because the numbers are split into two parts. So I was in the first part. Mm-hmm. We all tested Sunday before entering. Phase two starts today. Um, Everyone was tested yesterday before they could enter the bubble. And then the final stage starts Sunday. And we're all retesting again on Saturday before before we play. So, um, you know, that does bring a level of comfort. Yeah, and I suppose we should say as well that um, you were, well, you could have gone home if you wanted to um, in between the time. Obviously, you know, you're addressing safety first and you're all set up there with your work and dartboard as well. So, um, 
there's that safety aspect. And you're actually at the Milton Keynes Don Stadium. So it's this, the football stadium that um, MK Dons play at and it's a hotel. So <laughs> that facility is actually quite large in terms of being able to go out and exercise. It's not, you're not just stuck in a single hotel. Yeah, I've been on a pitch. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it, for anyone that's been here, you know, the setup's great. And that's why the PDC and, and a lot of the snooker events as well, I think Matchroom have um, have based themselves here during the pandemic because they can have the arena and the hotel all in one place. Um, all the rooms run along the side of the pitch on one side. The arena is out the back behind the goal. Um, but obviously it's all connected internally. So, you know, they can do everything and keep it in a proper in a proper bubble. Um so yeah, it, it does lend itself to to be helpful at this at this stage. I don't I don't think they would get to do it if players were um, having to travel in and out all, all the time. I don't think I'd be allowed. Yeah, well, it's good that you know you feel safe and um, you know you've you've taken the decision to stay down there. So hopefully you know you return another negative test um, on Saturday and you're allowed to to continue on into the final phase. So what we'll do is we'll look how you how you got there. Um, don't know if we'll say you did it the hard way. You did it. It, it was maybe a tense wait on on the last day, but day one, was, as we've already touched on briefly, um, you were playing Aaron Monk. What was your initial thoughts when the draw came out that you were facing him? Um, no, no real, no real difference. I think if you look through Q School's history, um, your your name doesn't really get you anywhere. You have to you have to play really well. There's a lot of shocks, but that's just because there's a lot of players out there that maybe don't play at this level um, regularly. But there's a lot of players here that can play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you just have to look at the betting before before the event started. Um, basically, anyone without any stats, recent stats, started at two hundred to one, and the betting market just went mental. You know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and all those more well-known names are, are further up. But we've lost mm-hmm. some. Wayne Warren, video world champion. Um, year before last, there was no BDO World Championship last year because they had their own issues. But um, so current BDO champion, if you like, mm-hmm. didn't get through. No. Um, you know, you, you have to. So drawing Aaron, you know, I knew it was in for a tough game, but mm-hmm. it shouldn't really make any difference. It's all about how you play. It's the only thing you can affect is how you play yourself. So just kind of self focused. And what's it? What was it like? You know, obviously, there's is it thirty on boards in in the one room. What's that like playing a match with all these other games going on around you? Are you are you managing to focus just specifically on your area? Yeah. So if you picture Teka and put thirty two boards around the perimeter on the outside, that's mm-hmm. how spaced out it is. It's massive, okay. and then the dividers between each board come out. A fair amount, so you can't see you the can't board see or mm-hmm. or the marker. No, yeah. um, you can see the, the player playing beside you, but you wouldn't catch your eye. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're too far away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, good setup. Very very professional. No, that's good to hear. So, was there any nerves going into the first match? Just obviously with it being the first first match at Q School. I was nervous throughout. Yeah, um, my hand shook throughout. You just you just got to try and control it. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, so yeah, definitely nervous. Mm-hmm. And then coming away after day one, obviously we touched on the result didn't go the way you expected. And you know what was that feeling like for you? Were you just focused on on day two already, or did you need to take some time to get that defeat out of your system? It took me until about two hours before play on on Tuesday to really get out of my system. I was texting my cousin, um, John, in the morning. Um, he's played, John's played a bit of pro-am golf and stuff. Um, and he's kind of wired the same as me. You know, it's easy to say words, forget it, move on. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I was still annoyed when I woke up in the morning. I was trying to kind of move on um, and be positive. So, yeah, probably two hours before. And then once the draws made, you got to refocus on the next player you're playing, you know, you then you then are ready and you've got to try and get ahead. But again, looking at some of the some of the messages from players that have done this before that have started poorly, you know, you um you take comfort from that. And 
the great thing about Q School, because there's automatic qualifiers every day, even if you lose first round in the first two days, you can still qualify in day three. You've got to go and win the tournament, but you can still qualify. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just got to kind of keep, keep going. Then, and then, which is what you've done as well. You've qualified despite losing your first game. Day two, um, you, you asked for a favourable draw, so to speak. Um, you didn't really get that first up, um, drawing no. Chris one talk is how one talk, yeah. I'll pronounce his name, but yeah. um, that wasn't a problem. You saw through that with a six four win. Was that as tough as the scoreline suggested? I mean, obviously yeah. we're only seeing the scores coming through, so yeah. Chris, Chris had a better average than me. Um, he averaged ninety two in that game. Um, and talking about <laughs> fit, favorable draws, you know, he'd he'd ran into um, Charles Barstow the day before who went through automatically yeah. and lost with a 96 average. He then ran into me and lost with a 92 average. So he's he's in the same boat as me thinking any chance. You're watching <laughs> the next board and someone's won with a 65 average and you're going, come on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it was a really tough game. I, I, it was close all the way and I managed to get a 5-3 lead and I think he left me on 300 and something. And leg nine, he, he went. He went a bit mental, but I knew I had to throw in leg ten, so I just kind of forget it, focus on the next leg, you know. And I think of that. I've had a good tenth leg. Can't remember exactly what it was, but um, yeah, to see through it was a good win. Happy with that one. Yeah, I remember texting Beats during that leg, thinking you've definitely ch- not. I'm not saying you chucked the leg, but the the mind had definitely shifted to I've got the throw and. I'll just focus on that because, like you said, the scoring power in that particular leg was just didn't match up. And yeah, you, you got the job done in the end. And and that took you through to face Jack Neary um, mm-hmm. in your second match. Now I'd watched, well, what I like to do is once I found out who you were playing was see how they'd performed previous. So um, I've been on Dark Caller and all these various websites as well as checking Dark Connect now. In the two games that Jack had previously played, he'd raced into 3-0 leads and then got pegged back to, to three all. Now, I suppose as as a player on the floor, you wouldn't have known anything about how they'd got on previously, would you? No. All I knew was um, his average from the previous match. And the only reason I knew that was because I was waiting on his match to finish before we, we were to play. Mm-hmm. Um so, you know, you're, you're watching the result. And when the result comes up on the Dark Connect, the average is beside the result, so you can't miss it. So were you just um, watching Dark's Connect or were you actually watching the match physically? I was just watching Dark's Connect, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't go and watch the game. It's, you know, not not really. I'm, I'm only watching Dark's Connect so that I know when someone gets the four legs, I'm, I'm two legs away. So... You know, to start getting ready. That's that's the only reason you're you're watching it. But um, I think if you stand and watch some of these games, you just you're playing mind games with yourself. You know. Yeah. And and how did you feel that that match went? Obviously, a six three victory. To get your second um, point on the board as it's a point scoring system, uh, point per win at Q School. Mm-hmm. Um, did it did it feel a comfortable win in comparison to your first round game, or is it never no, comfortable? It started. No, it started started well. I started really well. I don't think Jack did. And then he started hitting me with everything. Um, and is that, I think he probably averaged, I think it was probably his best average of the day, if I'm honest. Um, so then he played played well to get back at me. Um, but yeah, I just stayed patient. And the thing is, you, you got to kind of, you got to focus on your own throw a lot. Um, mm-hmm. If you lose a leg and it's against the throw, you just got to kind of forget about it. Think right, just hold throw here and let's mm-hmm. let's reset. You know, um, I think that's what happened. I think that was a uh, towards the end of that match. It kind of played out that both players held their throw all the way to the end. Um, yeah. So yeah. after going three 0 up, yeah, finished six three. I think did it. Yeah, yeah. They did they did finish six three? It's funny you say that because I know speaking to to Michael in the group chat, I kept saying like, "It's all right, it's Sean's throw next. Just hold throw and." It's interesting as a fan, we think, well, it's fine. You've got the throw and you're leading. It's the psychology of a darts player as well, thinking, well, if I lose this leg, you know, the confidence in your own throw to go and do the, do the business. Um, yeah. Was it the round of 32 that you played Shane McGurkin? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Disappointing. I think you'll you'll admit yourself a, a, a drop in the average and a, a, a scoreline that I don't think any of us really expected six one. Um, a bit frustrating end to the day. Yeah. First of all, Shane's a good player. Um, if you look at how many points he's accumulated and what his averages have been, um, I didn't I didn't know him. I didn't know that. You know, he produced that. Um, but, you know, credit where credit's due, he played really well. Personally, I don't know where it came from. Um, worst performance of the weekend for me. Um, average drop to something, 82, 83, yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you were and, nearly 90 in the match before, weren't you? So it was quite a, a big drop Yeah, I think, I think it was high 88s for both matches on, on Tuesday that I won. Mm-hmm. And then dropped, um, and yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit frustrated, but it was easier to forget about it because he got two points on the board. Um, I knew that I was now I'd, I'd played my way into the tournament, um, and uh, yeah, just just kind of wrote it off. Um, wished him all the best, and um, yeah, I, d- I didn't have to mark either because after. You got a fifty percent chance of not needing to mark once you win your board, because obviously mm-hmm. you the boards are having all the time. So I didn't need to mark, so I was just you know back up, back up to my room after that one, and um, mm-hmm. and then just trying to kind of chill out for a bit and reset for the next day. So after after that defeat, also you you know you say that you know you've got points on the board, so you're in contention of getting to the final phase. When when you retreat to your room. You, you say you chill out, but do you have a throw sh- at all that night? No. No. No, no, not at all. You, your practice is all done in the weeks leading up to it. You know, you've pounded the board at home. Even in the week, the last few days before I left, um, I only played, you know, maybe two or three matches a night, whereas I've been playing a little bit more than that. Uh, and then you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I hardly, hardly picked up a dart at all. You, mm-hmm. you really want to be sharp. It's all about sharpness. Um, mm-hmm. You think that you know throwing something that weighs twenty two grams from from less than eight feet, like how can tiredness or whatever affect you? I, I can tell you, if you're not bang sharp, your performance levels will drop massively. Mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing how just that little little edge makes a difference in darts. So, um, no, I just I start practicing four hours before um, plays due to start mm-hmm. in the morning. I have little twenty minute blasts on off on off um, to get me going for the day I play. But no, once once I'm finished playing for that day, no, it's no more no more throwing. Yeah, just a, a good wee insight there. But certainly, you know, you, you, your averages and um, throughout the the phase one and your finishing uh, on both day one and day two was pretty exceptional. You must have been pleased with with your finishing. Yeah, I played well under pressure, which gave me the most confidence going into day three. You know, I was saying, saying this morning that every time I went to the hockey thinking this has to go because I've been put under pressure, more often than not it did. So I got a lot of confidence from that, thinking, well, I'm not messing around in doubles here, um, which is which is always a difference. Um, just I felt my scoring had, had let me down a little bit. Um, I've been chasing a lot of treble 19, so been successful in treble 19, but yeah, treble 20 scoring wasn't wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, you know. But mm-hmm. over, overall, like you say, finishing was strong, so I had a chance. Yeah, you're you're certainly good on your. Um switching to 19s because you were hitting a lot of 96s we noticed um, but um, yeah. that you speak about performing under pressure and that gave you a lot of confidence you certainly needed that for match one on day three um, a topsy-turvy yeah. game that was went right down to the wire 6-5 victory in the end that's another example of, of getting a tough draw you know bleating about getting a tough draw myself but Player I played, Daniel Daniel Day has ended up. Um, you can look on the Dark Connect stats of all his combined po- opponent averages. He had the toughest draw of all. Um, and again, he'll be thinking, you know, he's ran ran into me and I've produced my best performance of the of the week at, at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but again, he threw he threw everything at me. There was a few legs in there. I kind of just had to let go. Um, I was forty down, I think. Yeah, where I was going to say, what was that? Because you started off well. I think you were two one up, if I remember correctly. I know Michael will probably be shouting, trying to correct me, but because um, you you started well, scoring powers, you hit a couple of one eighties in there as well. And you had a twelve dart leg in the match, but what was what was going through your mind at four two down? I think I'd won the bull up, so I was only down a break. Mm. Um, if you think I'm too behind, I've got to win. You know, you got to win there four out of the next That's five. Mm. Um, then you know you're. you're you're on a hiding to, to nothing really. Um, you got to stay positive. So down a break, hold hold your throw is what I was thinking, and then attack his throw. Mm-hmm. And I think from memory, I think leg eight, I did start heavily um, and managed to break. But then when I went five four up again, he had another he had another great leg um, to get it back to five five, and then. Then it's deciding leg. It's win, it's it's win or bust really. Mm-hmm. Um, no chance of going through with two points. So, um, just kind of composed myself and I think I started one forty, one three four in that leg, that last leg. Um, and he didn't start very well, um, which kind of gave me the the breathing space to just set it up and and finish it off. So yeah, massive relief. Then when when the average just came up at the end, you know. Um, I think I'd average 92 to his 85 and just goes to show sometimes a gap in the averages doesn't mean anything it was it was a really tight game it could have gone either way yeah because you had a crucial double one in one of the legs best of one ever yeah <laughs> yeah must have been feeling the pressure on that one I think I was I was ahead I was miles ahead and 68 left and I'd hit the 60 and, and hit the 4 and hit the 2 to leave double one which is a little bit criminal you should never leave yourself double one if you're comfortable mm. I think he hit a 180 to leave I can't remember 48 or something like that it was a, it was a small two dart again um, and uh, yeah I had, had to go or I was mm. in big trouble um, but yeah sometimes sometimes double ones are the are the one that wins you games yeah um, and like you said you know your finishing has been pretty spot on most most of the, the time um, in Q school so far. So good just to show that that level of confidence was there to, to slot that one away. And that, that took you to a game against um, Budgen uh, in match two of the day. And that was quite a, I don't know, well, from our perspective, watching on Darts Connect, um, it seemed fairly comfortable, I suppose, as a, a player. Maybe you have other thoughts? It, it maybe only seemed com- comfortable because I averaged 95 and a half. Um, Three nil up at one point. Which was, yeah, I think that, I think that's a game I was on a nine as well. I played really, really well. Mm-hmm. But um, he, he, he was still coming back at me at one point. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't straightforward by any stretch. Not Nothing is down here. You're under mm-hmm. pressure all, all the time. You know, you're finishing well, it looks great. Um, but you know, like I said, that everyone puts you under pressure right to the very last start. Yeah, um, I remember in that game you were five two up, and I think you had, I think you missed a couple double sixteens to win the game six two. Obviously, he then yeah. makes it five three, and you think, oh, this could go the other way. And obviously, I'm right in saying that leg difference comes into play at the end of the day as well with with the points. Yeah, um, but it, like you said, you've just got to execute every dart as as well as possible don't you yeah it's quick you can't you, you can't be thinking about leg difference or whatever you're just thinking about wins um and you just got to get enough wins to go over the line mm-hmm. so uh yeah just happy to get that one done in the end because the last thing you want to do is give chances away it was one of the few times um that I did give chances away but yeah managed to see it out so it was that was good yeah, and one thing you'd said, you know, you were hopeful that two victories would have been enough to, to see you through. Um, so you'd, you'd done that. And then you faced young John Brown, uh, son of Steve Brown. And yeah, that was 
came up against a very good opponent there. Very good he, scoring. He, he played really well. Um, but this 6-2 six, six probably didn't reflect the whole game. I think I was in the game more than that and gave a couple away. Um, but he take nothing away from him. He played really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, he, he went on a little bit deeper as well. He was comfortably through already. Mm. <clears throat> and I knew that the, the mathematicians before the tournament said that you couldn't possibly go out with four points. Mm-hmm. Um, but with it being an unofficial source, you, you never trust any of that. You know, you wait until you get the official confirmation. And then, you know, the, the disappointment of losing that, but I was thinking, have I done enough? I might have done enough. Um and then cue the longest two and a half hours of uh, of, of of anyone's kind of period during this process because I had every unofficial source and every mate telling me I was through based on these unofficial sources, but I just wasn't wasn't willing to accept that as a result until the final confirmation came through and it took ages. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you did you? have to wait in your room for that confirmation to come back then yeah yeah that- again I didn't I didn't have to mark I had to leave the, the arena within 10 minutes I was back in my room and I was just sitting texting people waiting um, so was that just a text came through to say congratulations or did you get a phone call no no you're just waiting for the official um, the official tweet that came out <laughs> well yeah they, did they, I think they put it on their website first and then they okay. link they link the, the tweet to the website, but yeah, mm. um, yeah, you just wait. You find out same time as everybody else. Yeah, so it must have been a huge relief then once the official confirmation came through, because I know uh, me and uh, Stuart <laughs> were doing our best to work out if if player A lost, then that would boost your chances. But I don't think it ever worked out to be that case. No, it, it, like the further people go on and they jump above you, you know, you had to always remember that there was going to be four automatic winners. Mm-hmm. And if you go that deep in the convert in, in the competition, they're going to be above you. So four have to come out of the order of merit before they decide the final 30, 36. Sorry. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when you first looked at the table and I was sitting in position 37, you're thinking, no, oh, no, come on, surely not. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, the, there were still players to come out of that. So mm-hmm. yeah, I ended up. Kevin Painter and Fallon Shell were obviously above you at that point and they went quite deep and had secured automatic qualification before I think their quarterfinal and semi-final games. So. Yeah, I think Kev- Kevin got through automatically so he came out with the order of merit table um, and then that obviously bumps you up. So yeah, mm-hmm. I think I finished 34th in the end. Um, so yeah, just just happy to get through, especially with the, with the draw that I seem to have I've faced if you, if you look at this if you look at the stats you know I seem to have I've played um, you know, a lot higher a standard of player than than some others that are through mm-hmm. which is good which is good because I feel like I'm prepared for Sunday you know mm-hmm. played I've played four players that are that are through to Sunday um, so you know I know what level I'm expecting so I feel like I'm ready for it mm-hmm and I think, you know, that, that'll that stand you, obviously, like you say, in good stead. So what now for you between now and Sunday? Obviously, you're, you'll are you be working um, some of the days as well. Um, we'll get that in there for the employers. Um, will you have a throw at night time? You know, because there'll be a lot of downtime just stuck in a hotel room. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll have a little throw. Um, like you say, I've got, I've got three days' work to do. A bit of work to catch up on, so um, I'm fortunate that I can do that remotely from here. Um, and yeah, I'll just I'll just do little bits and bobs to keep myself sharp um, every so often. Um, probably pick it up a little bit uh, on Saturday. Um, I'll probably I think play is due to start at two o'clock on Sunday, so I'll probably have a good practice at two o'clock on Saturday. Um, just kind of replicate the time I'm going to be playing on on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, I'll, j- I'll just be I'll just be a little throw now and then to stay sharp. Like I said, I've done all the practice. It's um, you don't want to overdo it at this at this stage. If you're not prepared by now, then you're not going to do well. You know, it's just keeping that sharpness up. 
and and looking ahead to to Sunday, um, is there a level of confidence, or do you need the draw to be kind again? Because is it is, no, is it three days of attempting four. four days? Four days, yeah. No, like like I came here with no expectation. I'm probably one of the least fancied in the draw. Um, I haven't played darts for so long. It's, I've probably done well to get through. If I'm honest, um, but you know. If I produce 92, 95 averages, you can't deny that I'm, I'm going to do some damage. Um, I'm not confident. I don't. I don't like think I'll win a, a tour card. Um, my aim will be like it was when I when I came in on Monday. I'll, I'll try and win the first leg, and if I win the first leg, I'll I'll try and win the next one. And I'll just take it. Mm-hmm. The old cliche, one at a time, you know. Yeah. And and obviously you you get a point per win. So is there any kind of talk on how many points are needed? A day. Um, I think if if you go looking for it, you'll you'll it'll be out there. I don't I don't know exactly what it is myself. Mm-hmm. Not not look that far ahead. Um, but you know you would think that the points only come in from the last sixty four. So your first round win is not going to carry anything. Um, so you'd think that if you picked up two points a day, going by the fact that you know you'd be tied sixteenth every day, I think that would probably be enough. Um, going off my own, my own thoughts. And is that enough to secure a tour card? Then is, is so there's one, one winner every day um, goes through, and then there's a new order of merit from that final stage, which is yet to be decided because it will go on um, how many people played here and how many people played in Germany. Mm-hmm. But going by the entries, I think the split will be about sixteen tour cards here, thirteen in Ger- Germany. So you'll be top 12 in that order of merit will also get one. Well, here's hoping um, for continued success for you um, at the weekend and through into the early part of next week. Uh, it's always nice to see a local lad doing well. Um, so for the support that you've received and hopefully this podcast will help generate some more support for you um, throughout. Um, if there's anybody you know looking to sponsor you in the future, where can they, they get in touch with you, Sean? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing, I'll be doing something going forward. Um, you know, the likelihood is I'll, I'll be, I'll be playing in the Challenge Tour, which is a feeder tour to the Pro Tour. If if I go and go and produce a little bit of a miracle um, from Sunday and, and and win a tour card, then obviously I'll be doing that. Um, they could probably contact me through you, Glenn. <laughs> um, yeah, you could get me on, get me on Twitter or. Or um, plenty of people out there have got my number. I think I'm, I'm I'm pretty well known in Aberdeen just from just from being in Aberdeen. We all know each other, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know. So um, yeah, that, that'd be good. I'd appreciate any support moving forward because uh, you know it's it is an expense to do these do these tours. But um, you know, I, I would like to have you know a mini ambition to to try and get back to where I was before and then keep on improving and. And maybe one day, you know, not just try and win a tour card, but be competitive on tour. That would be that would be excellent. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us um, to have the exclusivity of speaking to you on qualifying for the final phase, and and we just want to wish you all the best um, ahead of that and and for the future as well in your endeavours in darts. So thanks very much, Sean. Yeah. No worries. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks for your time. See you later.